Welcome back to our series, Learning Curve. And today we're talking about learning to share. And we're going to be looking at 1 Corinthians 14, which probably isn't one of the more comfortable chapters in the Bible for a lot of people. Because in that chapter, Paul talks a lot about tongues and prophecy. Now, I'm not going to be dealing with the, uh, the mechanics of tongues and prophecy. Uh, I may uh, we're going to look more at their function and something that drives them and how that that is powerful in the church. So I want to begin with this scripture that I find incredibly amazing in 1 Corinthians 14. But if all of you are prophesying and unbelievers or people who don't understand these things come into your meeting, they will be convicted of sin and judged by what you say. And as they listen, their secret thoughts will be exposed. They will fall to their knees and worship God, declaring God is truly here among you. I want you to think about that expression, God is truly here among you. And I want you to think about who's saying it. In Paul's context, it's the unbeliever, it's the lost, it's people who've come in from outside, and for some reason they have joined a gathering of the believers, and what they've seen that day has caused them to declare that God is among these people, that God is in this place. What is it? Now, Paul uses a term prophesying. He, he doesn't, I mean, a lot of times we think that if we can present a great argument, if we can present the right sermon, if we can just put the service together in a compelling way, that that will help people know that there's a God and that he loves them. But Paul talks about this thing called prophesying. And so today we, we're going to tip into these two things, tongues and prophecy, not as the how the gifts work or what they're about. And, uh, and to be fair, when I speak of them, I'm generally going to speak of them in very broad strokes. I think most of the gifts, but especially these two, work in much broader ways than most people imagine. Most people have a very narrow concept of how tongues or prophecy might work. And, and you may be taking this video going, I don't even know what those two things are. And, and that's going to be okay for today because we're going to talk about what their purpose is and how they help the body. So first, let's talk about tongues, but let's look at it as a, a form of supernatural courage. The one who speaks in the tongue builds himself up. You see, when we start moving into the supernatural gifts, the spiritual gifts, those gifts come from a an unearthly place. They come from the throne of heaven. They come from the goodness of God. And so here's a gift that Paul tells us that its primary function is that it builds up the individual. And so here is a, a gift from God that when people use that gift, they're encouraged from heaven. Now think about that. Do you need, do you need stuff from God? I mean, would it be nice to get up every morning and go to the throne room of God and get what you need for the day. Are you facing a challenge or have you got some anxiety that you need something larger than what you possess? Well, here's something that Paul talks about that functions as a conduit between you and God. Now, how does that particularly function? I'm, I'm not getting into that today. This is a short video. But the point of this is, is that Paul understood that there's a gift available to people that is going to give them access to the throne room of God and is going to build them up individually. You know, there's a passage in Romans 8 that might shed a little light on this and might help, might help you with any fears or anxieties you have about particularly the gift of tongues. The Bible says in Romans 8, it says the Holy Spirit helps us in our weakness. For example, we don't know what God wants us to pray for, but the Holy Spirit prays for us with groanings that cannot be expressed in words. And so here we see that there's a way that when we pray, when we try to connect with God, that the Holy Spirit connects us and he does the praying. And so when you think of the gift of tongues, uh, you may be very comfortable with it, but what I want you to think of is how that its purpose and how that the purpose of all this is that God's desire is that he wants you to connect with the throne room to get what you need. So here we see that people have the ability for supernatural courage, and then we move into this concept of prophecy, and, and here we see this potential and availability for supernatural encouragement supernatural encouragement. 
Let love be your highest goal, but you should also desire the spiritual abilities the Spirit gives, especially the ability to prophesy. But one who prophesies strengthens others, encourages them, and comforts them. A person who speaks in tongues is strengthened personally, but one who speaks a word of prophecy strengthens the entire church. So this word prophecy is big, it's scary. Uh, you know, as soon as you hear it, you're like, oh, but I, I, you can't tell the future or, or, or prophets scare me, you know, because we think of these Old Testament pictures of prophets standing there, usually, I'm thinking usually some outdoorsy, skinny, gnarly dude who's pointing at people and correcting them. But the, even that is not an accurate picture of even the Old Testament prophet because when the people were seeking and pursuing God, the Old Testament prophet had lots of encouragement and courage for those people. And so here we see Paul telling us to seek to prophesy. What does that mean? Well, he's telling us to, to get from heaven things that others need on earth. He's telling us to get courage from heaven and share that courage here on earth. To see what God is doing, saying, sharing, what he's giving you and, and giving that to other people. You see, the gift of prophecy changed from the old covenant to the new covenant. You, you hear that in the words of Peter in Acts 2.17 when he's preaching in that amazing Pentecostal sermon, he says, in the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit upon all people your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. So here, uh, Peter's telling us that, um, that what had been prophesied through Joel, Joel, that people were going to prophesy, everybody, is happening in that moment. That's what he says in Acts chapter 2. So in the New Covenant, we don't have the old, crusty John the Baptist type who was and John was the last and greatest of the old covenant. Jesus said so himself. But he also said that John's the least in the kingdom of heaven. Because in the kingdom of heaven, everyone has the Holy Spirit. Everyone has this power to connect with the throne room of God. The ability to come boldly to the throne room of grace. Doing that enables us to give courage to other people, not out of our resources. Sure, we can affirm people. We can tell people they did a good job. We can tell people they've developed great character. They have good behavior. But we can't, from ourselves, tap heaven. You know, we have to go to the Father to get what he says about people. That's supernatural encouragement. Because what Father says about people is way larger and way bigger than what we can say about people. The point I want you to know about both of these gifts that Paul's addressing in 1 Corinthians 14 is that they are heaven to earth gifts. In one of them, heaven is giving courage to the individual. And in one of them, heaven is giving courage to give to others to the body of Christ. That's the concept. When this happens, when the body of Christ is giving courage to the, the members of the body, when it's honoring the members of the body, this becomes a witness to those who don't believe, a powerful witness to those who don't believe. So I wanna challenge you, and I'm challenging myself, to get in a mindset where we receive from heaven and we give to others, and we do that with honor. Because the Bible says in Romans 12, love each other with genuine affection and take delight in honoring each other. Because the Bible tells us to honor each other. And that's what I want to see as a, as a pastor, as someone who works in the faith community, and someone who's working for the kingdom of God. I want to see believers that are able to be patient and honor other believers, especially believers who practice their faith in slightly different ways. Because some people are more rational in their approach to faith, and some are more intuitive in their approach to faith, and there should be no division. There are places for both of those kinds of people in the body of Christ. And so we need to learn to honor each other. And what is honor? Honor is we are recognizing the God-given uniqueness in every individual. We are honoring them as a free, reborn child of God. We are honoring them as someone that God has created and purposed for a mission and a reason in this world. So I know it's a lot to think about. If you can leave this idea, this message with knowing that I am supposed to work from heaven to earth, 
I receive courage from heaven. I encourage from heaven. And I do that with honor. You'll have captured a lot of what we're dealing with in 1 Corinthians 14 today. I hope you have an amazing day. I hope you get a chance to receive and to give in Jesus' name today.